I recently got this digital microscope from Link Micro. I made this video so that I can show you how to assemble the parts and also show you some of its features. This is an awesome microscope and I'll be using it in my future videos. I want to mention that this video is not sponsored, but Link Micro did send me this digital microscope at no cost. First I'll go over what's included. Here is the base, which has these two adjustable lights. The power cord plugs into the back of the base right here. This is the support bar for the screen and the camera. This is the screen and the camera. It has three ports on the back. It also comes with a micro SD card, which is already inserted. You can see that it's a 64 GB micro SD card. This is the power cable. It has three plugs and a dongle with three buttons. I'll go into more detail on these buttons later. This other cable is a data cable. It can be used to power the screen and the camera, but it also allows you to connect the microscope to your computer so that you can stream the output to your computer. This is the power adapter that it comes with. This is a micro SD card reader. It allows you to take the micro SD card out of the screen and plug it into the computer. This is some hardware that you may need. This is a holder for glass slides. There's a port on the back to power the light inside. And here are some glass slides that it comes with. Here are a few microfiber cloths to clean the screen with. And finally, here's the remote. It does not come with batteries, but it just needs two regular AAA batteries. I forgot to point out that it also comes with this HDMI 2.0 cable. Now let's assemble the parts. It's very easy. Inside this packet of hardware, you'll have two springs with two screws. The screws may or may not be inside of the springs when you get them. There are also two of these bent metal brackets. And finally, there's a hex wrench with two little hex screws. These screws are for under the base right here. In the base you have these two holes. This is where you mount these hardware parts. For each bracket, assemble them like this, then screw it into the hole. Don't screw them all of the way down, just enough to hold them in place. These are clamps to hold down parts while you're working on them. You can press on the back of the bracket to open up the front of it. These are optional. I won't be using them for now, so I'll just remove them. Let's go to the support bar. Up here you have the arm that the camera will mount to. These two screws will support the camera in place. For now, screw them out. Back here are the parts to adjust the height. I'm taking this screw out because I want to show you something. There's this plastic part inside of the bar that this one screw goes into. If this screw is too loose, the arm will go down on its own. But if you tighten it, you can use these knobs on the sides to adjust the arm up and down. Don't over tighten that screw though, just keep it a bit snug. Now let's connect the support bar to the base. On the bottom of it, there's this nut. It might be a bit tight, so loosen it slightly. The support bar will screw into this hole on the base. Screw it in as far as it'll go. It most likely won't align to where you want it, so just twist it back to the proper alignment. Now you can tighten the nut on the bottom to hold it in this position. Make sure you get this nut as tight as you can by hand. Grab your screen and slide the camera into the arm. Your camera will have this ring on it that will spin freely. This ring is where you want it to go into the arm. Now you can tighten these two screws on the arm. With everything tightened properly, you should be able to move the screen around easily and still have it stay where you position it.
Also, when you raise the arm of the support bar all of the way up, it'll stop at the top. You won't accidentally get it to fall off the top. And finally, the last thing to do is to remove the screen protector. The protector is very shiny, but the actual screen isn't because it's anti-glare to make it easier to use in brightly lit rooms. Now I'll show you how to use this digital microscope. Let's start with the power cable. There are two plugs to connect to the microscope, a USB-C plug and a barrel plug. The USB-C plug goes into this port on the back of the screen. The barrel plug goes into this port on the base to power these two adjustable auxiliary lights. You won't always need to use these lights because the camera gets a good image with just the built-in ring light. The other end of the cable has a standard USB-A plug which plugs into this power adapter. After plugging this into power, the auxiliary lights come on automatically. The screen and camera will also automatically start to boot up. On this power cord, there's a dongle with three buttons. One button is a power button, which behaves the same as unplugging and plugging in the power source. These other two buttons adjust the brightness up and down for the auxiliary lights, but does not affect the ring light that's on the camera. I'm placing this dime on the base under the camera for these demos. The camera is behind the screen, and to adjust the focus you just twist it. The image on the microscope screen is actually much better than what my recording shows. Later in this video, I'll show the actual quality of the microscope's image. This first button is a power button. To turn it off, hold the button down for a few seconds until the screen goes blank. This is also how you save any settings that you've changed. To turn it back on, just click the button. It goes through a boot up sequence which takes about 10 seconds to complete. The M button has two functions, mode and menu. Just clicking the button will cycle between the three modes, video mode, photo mode, and storage mode. Storage mode lets you go through the videos and photos that are on the microSD card. Holding down the M button will bring up the menu. While in the menus, the up and down arrows are obvious. You scroll up and down in the menu. This button is like a select option and lets you move forward in that menu option. This button does the opposite and lets you move backward in that menu option. Most of the menu options are obvious what they do, but I will explain what some of the options do. Loop recording lets you choose how long you want each of the video clips to be. Just so that you're aware, the camera does do continuous recording, but it saves the recordings in these lengths of clips. Freeze is kind of like pressing pause when you turn it on. Pressing the M button from here will take you to the second set of menus. When you turn line on, you have eight lines on the screen. You can only see seven of these lines right here because one of them has the color set to transparent by default but any of these eight lines can be adjusted. You can make them vertical or horizontal. You can also change their location on the screen, the color of the line, and even how wide the line is. Just use these two buttons to scroll forward and backward through the different settings. The M button will take you back to the previous menu. Those are the video settings, now I'll show you the photo settings. Click the M button to get to the photo screen, then hold down the M button to bring up the menu. The resolution options for the microscope photos are 8 megapixels minimum and 64 megapixels maximum. That's it for the menus. From the photo screen, the OK button takes a picture. An icon in the top left corner will come up. 
and now you can see that there are two new photos on the storage screen. When you're on the video screen, the OK button will start recording video, and the top left corner will show you that it's recording and how long that current video clip is. Pressing OK again will stop the recording. This button with the camera icon takes a snapshot of what the camera sees and shows you that snapshot for a few seconds. The up arrow does a digital zoom in. You can see over here how much it's zoomed in. It can do a digital zoom up to 8x. The down arrow will zoom out the digital zoom. Underneath the button there's a dial that adjusts the brightness of the ring light that's on the camera. Now I'll reposition my camera to show the main usage of this digital microscope. I will also be showing actual recordings from the camera. I'll start recording on the microscope now so that you can see the video quality that it records. This is also the same quality that you see on the actual screen. You can see that I'm zooming in with the dial on the back of the support arm. Then to focus you twist this part of the camera. You can get much closer than this. Right now it's so close that I cannot fit my finger between the camera and the base. Now let's check out this glass slides holder. It has a light inside that you can power with this port. Just use the barrel plug for the auxiliary light on the base. On this first slide, we're going to be looking at this dark dot in the middle of the slide. When you're adjusting the microscope closer to the slide, pay attention to how close you're getting so that you don't crash into the slide with the camera. Now that it's focused on this one slide, I can change slides without needing to refocus. I won't show you all of the slides in this video, but I do want to show you a couple of cool features with the remote. Obviously you can stop and start the recordings. One of the buttons lets you switch between black and white and color. Another button will invert the colors. These two features can be handy for showing details that are hard to see normally. The user guide that comes with the microscope shows what all of the buttons on the remote do, so I won't show everything. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm going to be using this microscope for some of my future videos. I'm even tempted to create a new channel where all that I do is look at different things up close with this microscope. Let me know if you would be interested in watching a channel like that. I also have an unboxing video of this microscope on my second channel. Go check that out if you want to see my initial unscripted reactions. Thank you for watching.